is evolved from the formless and the formless is stronger than the one with the form you take uh, any manifested from the nature that is from divinity life force magnetism all put together these three entities are stronger than the human being and mightier than the human being who is only an assembly assembly of uh, all the three factors the almighty absolute space he is the mightiest the inexhaustible source of energy and of the manifested power the power of the absolute space is the strongest and there is nothing to beat it the entire universe is floating in the space so that is the might of the, the space anything that has come out of that space is obviously do has come out of the absolute space it is less potent than the space and uh, this shows that the evolved beings are less potent than the totality and uh, these two abstract things are felt of their existence recording in progress and uh, the slide please the genetic center life force panchabhutas sabda thadus the genetic center life force and the panchabhutas of the panchabhutas water and the earth are physical the other three are non physical formless the sabda thadus all of them have the form but uh, the vital fluid has no form and it is uh, makrishi has knowingly utilized the word fluid it is a uh, it cannot be said with certainty whether it is liquid or solid or gas or all the three combined one of our uh, member uh, ravi prakash used to say that this is closely related to plasma in science so these five genetic center life force panchabhutas sabda thadus and panchagoshas all are the effect of manifestation of a spinning character and uh, panchagoshas you all know that it is annamaya gosha mm. pranamaya gosha vinyanamaya gosha manomaya gosha vinyanamaya gosha 
and Anandamaya Kosha. This is also a manifestation of uh, an outcome of the spinning system. The coarse one, Anandamaya Kosha, is on the periphery. Then, subtler than the Anandamaya Kosha is the Pranamaya Kosha, the energy body. And this is next to it. And the inner to it is the Manomaya Gosha and the secrets of nature above the common perception of the human mind is the, the Vijnanamaya Gosha and the last one is the bliss body again which is uh, not physical it is abstract and the same raw material of energy particles or divine dust particles, life force particle system, they unite to form these uh, five entities, genetic center, life force, and sabhuta, sabda thadus, and panchakosha. And the evolution from the spinning system is uh, these uh, entities let us see them in detail subsequently next slide previous one yeah the spinning system of life force and genetic center. The first one is string directly proportional and one strengthens the other. The spinning system of life force and genetic center, they have a common uh, formation, existence. The strength is directly proportional and uh, one strengthens the other. That is, uh, the life force, if it is uh, stronger, the genetic center is uh, stronger. And if the genetic center is stronger, the life force is stronger. The attractive power of the uh, genetic center will be more and that will hold more life force particles in the system of life force. So the life force is stronger, the strength and the uh, performance of the life force depends on the power of the genetic center itself. And uh, the field of the spinning system of the genetic center. As it spins, the biomagnetic field and the life force and the sabdathadus, they all spin. And when they spin, you get four well-demarcated areas, four zones, namely beta, alpha, theta, and delta. In a spinning system, you have a static central axial point and a peripheral point which is fast uh, moving. And uh, the frequency varies from zero at the center to 40 at the periphery. And we all know that the waves are differentiated into the four uh, types, namely beta, alpha, theta, and delta. And uh, impact on the field of the genetic center on the life force and its, uh, on its velocity, velocity spinning and wavelength. 
it's all very significant uh, the the field of genetic center it is a spinning system of magnetism biomagnetism and uh, in the periphery you have the faster moving beta fraction and as you move towards the center there is a velocity gradient the wavelength of the beta um, less gradually comes to zero at the center of the genetic center the same way the spin also comes down and the velocity wavelength spinning all the presentation in the spinning system is following a single principle of uh, a gradient and uh, as you move to the periphery the whichever factor you take whether it is velocity or a spin or the wavelength they all increase with the result there is uh, the density shows a gradient in the spinning system of the genetic center the periphery has a, a lighter less specific gravity and the center has a highest specific gravity with the result you find a wave that is moving in the peripheral zone is faster free to move about the interparticular life force particle distance is more and there is movement of the the uh, either the life force particle or the biomagnetic wave is easier in the periphery and as it moves towards the center it gets obstructed and it's made to shrink and when it comes to the center of the genetic center the velocity becomes zero the wavelength is comes to the point and the velocity the spinning also comes to a minimum and they are described as uh, zero waves that is a uh, waves without a wave character it is almost stationary wave is another expression of the state of the of the nature of the uh, biomagnetic wave there and that is uh, explain what happens to the biomagnetic wave as it goes towards the genetic center center of the genetic center it gets uh, compressed and compressed so it shrinks the if you uh, take the elasticity of the biomagnetic wave as it comes to the periphery it opens up as it comes towards the center of the this thing it is almost gets contracted and contracted to become a dot like thing and uh, this is very very important formation of the uh, imprint and their behavior um, it is uh, significant in the formation of the imprint as well as when the imprint expands to open out to its uh, full perceived nature to the full size as it gets opened up in the brain so this opening up and 
becoming a point like thing is common to all the waves as the waves contract and expand exhibit this elasticity this is a very significant in the functioning of the life force as well as the uh, genetic centers properties only because of this contraction and expansion due to the pressure difference the density difference and the velocity difference of the biomagnetic wave they become a dot and uh, this character is essential to have the xerox copy of the five sense organs uh, experiences taken by the biomagnetic wave when they compress and become a dot almost the biomagnetic wave shrinks compresses consolidates whereas the xerox copy it gets folded and coil and spin it is a spun and uh, it becomes almost a magnetic knot and it is fitting with the character of the imprint shrinking and expanding both are possible and uh, the next point is impact of the field of the genetic center on the life force on its velocity spinning and wavelength that is uh, the life force as it travels through the field of genetic center it has to it cannot avoid the increase in the density of the field reduction in the interparticular distance towards the center of the genetic center almost the energy particles or the life force particles all lie side by side as a woven cloth out of threads when they are becoming closer to each other and gets woven one with the other a cloth is formed similarly towards the center it is almost a syncytium of the life force particle or the energy particle which becomes a, a special field which gives the delta character to the biomagnetic wave where the frequency is 4 3 2 1 and still further if we have capacity to imagine from 1 it becomes 0.999 and 0.998 like that and comes to 0.000 so this gradient reduction in the uh, characters of the biomagnetic wave as it reaches the center it is very vital for the functions of the genetic center to be performed in the body next slide the life force particles they form the panchabhutas namely air light uh, that is uh, fire 
then you need water and solid this is because of progressively increasing number of particles life force particles in the space it becomes a akash with more particles it becomes air and still more with more compression of the field it becomes a fire and then with further compression the air and the fire unites to form the fire water and water on freezing on the frozen form it becomes a solid and that this appearance of panchabhutas and the formation of the sabda tadus or due to the nature of the spinning system of the causal body representing the uh, imprints and the other the life force of itself and it's on its dissolution of the energy particle it becomes the magnetism and the magnetism also spins around biomagnetism and they also exhibit the same nature of uh, beta alpha theta and delta and uh, the seventh tadu is the sexual vital fluid and it is a important when we see the impact of the sexual vital fluid on the genetic center as well as the so i'm sorry i'm not able to uh, block the incoming calls as it is okay so the uh, spinning system of panchabhutas and sabdatad almost create the human body and uh, another expression of this spinning system on the uh, genetic center is the evolution of the and if uh, anyone who smike is giving this uh, uninvited interruption they can mute themselves so that uh, the disturbance is avoided is it okay right now at this point i have uh, hurried through for want of time uh, the evolution of uh, the energy particle life force particle life force and if all others mute their mic then this disturbance may not be there okay all right so as i have not explain in detail i invite any clarification if it is wanted at this time replies this for questions ಆಡಿಟ್ 
Anybody with any questions? Where from this in enter? Yeah, I'm checking. I'm checking. Uh, it, uh, it is from the Rajmona. Rajmona, yes, uh, phone is unmuted. Okay, now any questions where you want any clarification or where I need to be corrected, you can intervene now because if we proceed further, it requires the acceptance of all the factors I said now. Bharat Shahji, is it clear? Yes, I, I, except I was wondering, there was a lot of disturbance on when you were talking about the presence of the sexual vital fluid and it's in mm. on the life force. There was a lot of disturbance, so I did not understand that part. <clears throat> so you can ask any doubt regarding the life force or the sexual vital fluid in the formation of a pancha bhutas or the sabda tadus you can ask no i don't have any questions uh Aya. okay okay blanca Um, no, not at this moment. I'm following the connection with the uh, electromagnetic and the vital fluid, and how does it uh, get specific into our genetic center? Mm. It's clear. Thank you. Okay. okay. Thank you. Uh, Ananda. It's clear. Thank you for the presentation. It's it's quite clear. Thank you, Aya. Right, right, right. And thank you. Uh, since we don't have any text elaborating on all these things, and uh, as I have uh, ventured to explain these things, I need uh, your support, confirmation that I am going on the right way. Uh, who is... so in terms of Panjabhutas and Sabdatalos, the spinning system is depends on the life force particles in it. So... Yes. If the life force particles have higher frequencies of a spin, wavelength, and the... Uh, the interparticular distance is less than all. This creates a dense, increased uh, density of the particles in a given space. So that movement only transforms from the Akash stage to wind stage and then to the fire stage and then to the water and the solid. These things are easily accepted in those to those who are familiar with the uh, Indian philosophy because the Panchabhutas are part and parcel. And in science, we don't talk about Panchabhutas, but the beauty is when we combine science and the uh, philosophy together, we get a better understanding. That is what I'm trying to explain. As we see, uh, for example, Sabrita, the one of the um, is born, 
So the bone within our body where the life force circulation is there, but the spinning system is along with the earth. So it is, the spinning system is combined with other spinning system of this whole universe. Uh, is you know according to the density for example as said bone is we see it's stable even though it is yes. in a spinning system of your yes, uh, yes, yes. point uh, which uh, yeah you brought that into the you know view yes. so thank you so much uh, when you accept this I have, I have, evolution I have, one, I have one question here uh, yes please sorry. Proceed, sir. So, like, we, yeah, we said, uh, um, like, right, uh, the, in a genetic genetic center, we are layers, right, beta, alpha, all that stuff. So, think if you think about it, our thoughts, right, say whatever we are seeing or listening, so that's going to be in certain frequency, right? So, with that way, when it comes to the genetic center, it needs to, for example, depending on our thought, it can be. Sometimes in the meditation, in the meditation state, we preach to alpha also. In that case, it still it needs to penetrate through the beta and then alpha, either those different layers, it needs to penetrate, right? Even though yes. our frequency, mind frequency, like, you know, in the meditative state, we are lower. Meditation, meditative state Listen. is a disturbance, is a disturbance which you create by the process of the procedure of meditation. That is, the real nature of the spinning system of the genetic center consisting of a causal body, astral body, and the physical body. All the three, they spin. And this spinning nature is disturbed by your effort of meditating. In meditation, you select a particular frequency and try to dwell there. And uh, in the process of meditation, the frequency at which you meditate gets expanded, compressing or uh, thinning out the other frequencies. So, this is uh, not natural and when it becomes a natural, you move from the state of meditation to Sahajanishta. Meditating all the time without effort. Then that becomes your nature. Is it okay, Naresh? So in the in that case in that case the genetic center, right? The wave needs to reach the genetic center, right? So does it penetrate? Still, it has to go through the beta that layer because the, layer, the beta layer is the outside layer, right? What I'm that's what I'm trying to kind of think. Yeah. How does that? Yeah, yeah. Or thought of it, it is the particles are suspended in orbits in layers, and uh, as the as they lose the spin, as they lose the reduce gets their wavelength reduced, they become slower and uh, tighter the density increases and the behavior is different from the beta zone to the theta zone and the arrangement of the uh, spinning system favors increase in the density compact packing of the media of the spinning uh, system and the appearance of particles heavier particles they are getting concentrated towards the center of the spinning system and the thinner ones smaller ones are posed to the periphery. So this polarization takes place in every spinning system and that is the basic architecture of the body. The Sabda Tadus, if you see, 
they all spin the juice being the lighter most he is in the periphery then comes the blood and then comes the muscle and within the enclosed in the muscular layer you have the fat and this fat lies between the bone and the muscle in the architecture of the body and uh, the fat that when it gets calcified it becomes hard bone and then you get the marrow and the sexual vital fluid at this point i want to see who is raising a question of this uh, anomalous behavior of the sabda tadus that is there has been a steady increase in the density from juice to the bone state but within the hard bone you have a jelly like uh, marrow and uh, out of this jelly like marrow you get the vital fluid which is formless structureless uh so does this happen in, a, in a, everywhere in the every in the body all the, in the all the uh, bones like uh, or is it very specific to certain region this one all the bones have that, uh, conversion to svf the, the marrow element see the skull bone that uh head portion this is formed by a flat bone which is a in that circle it has a inner layer and outer layer in between you have the marrow and in between the filling the cavity of the skull is the brain which is supposed to be supposed to represent the marrow and uh, out of this marrow you get the vital fluid sexual vital fluid here i i don't know why none of you raised the question here that is uh, there has been a steady increase in the density of the tadus up to the stage of the bone but after the stage of bone why there is softening of jelly like marrow within this bone and out of this marrow why you get uh, the uh, formless abstract uh, vital fluid so, so these tadus are because of what we eat so the food or whatever the content it has it's getting converted into different uh, chemical yeah, yeah. substances <clears throat> different levels of the journey of the evolution of the uh, energy from juice to vital fluid so mainly the reason is the food what we eat to convert this yeah yes but up to the stage of the bone it is increasing in density in particles becoming closer densely packed produces the bone structure but after that why there is softening again how do you explain the softening and still further when you go to the sukratadu that is the vital fluid it becomes a energy pure energy not even with any form it is a formless energy how do you it, it is uh, it is so extraction it is, uh, it is reverse evolution at that point from it reached up to then the yeah, maximum yeah. and then it's go why how do you explain this reverse nature 
Can I make a submission? Yeah. Is it probably due to the gravity which is holding everything and then eventually at some point it collapses towards the gravity? And as a result of we have this transformation to the sexual vital fluid. Congratulations. You have selected the right point and still it is difficult to understand, accept. For that, I have a, a little bit of different explanation. That is, if you look into the architecture of the planet Earth, the, it is made up of Panchabhutas and Sabdatadus. Okay, right? Yes, it is made up of the, the globe Earth is having water on its surface in the form of sea. Above that, you have the hot air, water, hot vapor, water vapor or hot air and then the uh, ordinary air and above that you get the akash element where there is pressure only no it is to start with formless akash where there are only the energy particles or divine dust particles and their association the life force particles. The life force particles, when they evolve, associate to form the life force particles, they move to air level. So, in the, in, in the earth model, you have the akash, below that you have the air and the air becomes hot air as it becomes closer and closer and fire later and the internal chemical change or the structural change of facilitates the formation of the water and this water on further compression becomes the liquid ice and uh, solids. The solid nature is further compressed that is expressed up to the stage of bone but if it is compressed again what happens when we see the earth, you have the water in the form of sea. And if you go to the bed of the sea, there rocks appear. The solid earth becomes represented by rocks and sand, everything. But when they are compressed still further by the centripetal and centrifugal force of the spinning earth, they are further compressed. And when they are further compressed from the state of the solid, from the state of the rocks, then you get the, as Naresh put it, the order of the nature of the Panchabhutas, they change from the hard bone you get the soft jelly like marrow and from the marrow you get the vital fluid though the bone appears stronger solid powerful the marrow which is appearing within the bone is denser than the bone and uh, it occupies the place within the bone and uh, 
if the next stage is the sukra tadu seventh tadu appearance of the seventh tadu is still uh, more compression and uh, more uh, density and uh, the result is they loses even the jelly like structure to become pure energy which is sexual vital fluid and this we see in our earth by drilling on the solid earth lower down below the uh, earth hard earth as you bore into it you get water subsoil water the, the water below the uh, rocks and if you go still further you get the fire there that is the zone of fire which is formed by the fissure and fusion fission and fusion creating lot of energy which acts like a uh, heat generator and if you cross penetrate and cross ahead of this fire zone you get air there and that air is a uh, uh, science explains it as uh, d3 deuterium and ozone like that and uh, heavy water it is said may be equated i am not a science student mm. in biology we don't come across these thing so this water and heavy water forms the next element on further compression it loses its form and generates energy so there is a reversal of the characteristics of a uh, jelly like uh, marrow and formless sexual vital fluid and though it is uh, fluid it is heavier than the marrow heavier than the bone or other things that's why it is occupying the central portion in the of the spinning system oh uh, what do you think of the explanation raj mohan har telayas prasad patala prasad paul kolumbia very nicely articulated here yeah so i mean if uh, if we can go back to some earlier session where you had shown us the life force particles which are also continuously spinning and also mm-hmm. the that's yeah. dust which is also constantly continuously spinning so the way i kind of framed up my thought process from that was that okay we i am probably just a dust particle in this whole cosmos and i am also spinning and naturally i need to have vortex and it is because of this vortex that i have this constitution of panjabudas and then saptatadus i think two two years ago when i first was questioning about vital fluid and sexual fluid vital sure. fluid you gave me a very nice uh, explanation and i thought over it and digested it so i think this is where i let me see how i can progress further what call me raj mohan raj mohan okay we will move to the next point that is uh, the spinning system of uh, the dust particle life force particle 
లైఫ్ ఫోర్స్ అండ్ ద పంచభూతాస్ అండ్ సబ్దాదూస్ అండ్ ఫర్దర్ ద వైటల్ ఫ్లూయిడ్ అండ్ వాట్ హ్యాపన్స్ టు ది సిస్టమ్ ఆఫ్ ద స్పినింగ్ సిస్టమ్ ఆఫ్ మ్యాగ్నెటిజం బయో మ్యాగ్నెటిజం when it reaches the sexual vital fluid level the impact of the sexual vital fluid on the life force what happens it on on the biomagnetic spinning system what happens the vital fluid is almost uh retracing its uh, evolutionary stage from solid to jelly like and then to the fire and air and then the uh, formless energy back to energy like an energy particle it is beyond the energy particle between the energy particle and the absolute space is the shukratadu level the sexual vital fluid uh, stage and if you see the absolute space which is according to magarishi is almighty god the first change that has that takes place in the space is the uh, shukratadu level or the energy pure energy and then that forms the uh, energy particle or life force particle or the akash particles they appear subsequently so this shukratadu level is the first chain and it is closest to the absolute space and the potentials of a vital fluid is almost like almighty the fluidly potent nature of the vital fluid it can form it can perform any action in the body it can produce energy it can regulate the energy movement it can regulate the biomagnetic movement it can regulate the evolution of the energy from the akash level to the panchabhuta level and from the panchabhuta level to the sabda tadu level for the elevation and in this uh, tadu level the bone on further compression it softens out as water appearing below the rocks the stony layer of on the spinning system of the uh energy in the planet in the in our planet earth and it still further becomes the fluid which is sexual vital fluid and uh, this sexual vital fluid has all the characters like uh, the absolute space it is thoroughly permeable it penetrates everything it becomes it evolves to anything that's why the vital fluid has the capacity to repair correct the damaged cell layers whether it is cell wall or the inner organelles of the cell namely mitochondria galga body or in centrioles and other structures the organelles of the cell all these things are getting corrected prepared 
rebuilt by the vital fluid and uh, above all it performs the most uh, difficult uh, process to understand that is it forms the sperm and the ova and unites to become a yeah, progeny a yeah? new born out of this union of uh, egg and uh, the sperm so all these things are possible and if the body has adequate quantity of vital fluid the spinning system of uh, the genetic center and the outer biomagnetic field is uh, stronger then the organization of the layers of energy into the energy particle life force particle life force and the panchabhutas sabda tadus and beyond that when it is unutilized when the vital fluid is unutilized in all these physical functions metabolic functions of the body it results in the production of the sexually active cells namely the ovum and the sperm and the union produces the offspring so that is the uh, understanding of the vital fluid and the nature of the vital fluid what it contributes to the spinning system of energy in the body what it is performing in the lay, in the level of the panchabhutas in the level of sabda tadus in the level of uh, the uh, unused surplus vital fluid all these things are explained when we go into the nature of the sabda tadus and especially the vital fluid shall we give a pass at this level for the questions dr ananda yes sir yeah. very good deep discussion today we can pause for now no specific yes. questions um, um, i'm quite happy with the understanding ayya naresh that is uh, very good ayya so a lot of uh, information here uh, something to think about now uh, we have our master tarun yeah varga all mudan um as uh, many questions came to my head when uh, we were talking about this so it's like the akash particle is similar to sexual vital fluid where it's but the sexual vital that fluid is, operates the, the in the physical yeah, yeah uh, allow me to intervene uh, tarun ji allow me to intervene that is uh, the akash particle is energy particle and that energy particle is later to the vital fluid sexual vital fluid it is something what you can equate with plasma they right. explain a state called plasma in science which yes. again is uh, uh, mistakenly uh, taken as ectoplasm or the other equivalents to it various words are used to describe this state the plasma appears to be the 
closest to the scientific expression. Uh, right, yeah, I, 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 I get that. You proceed. You proceed. Throughout the process, throughout the process, even at the end, when the sexual vital fluid is at the point, it still retains the properties of Akash particle all the way through. That's that's what I was trying to get to. It's like, even though the transformation happens through Saptatadus, all the properties of Akash is still exhibited in a limited yes. environment here. Is that something similar to see again, um, last week we were talking and touching on consciousness. So what yes. I would like to understand is if a physical form, which is the Panchaputas transforming all the way through Saptatadus and operating on, um, Panchakoshas, does consciousness do the same thing? Like it retains the main divine state all the way through, though it may transform, mutate, according to Magarishi. Again, um, this is my experience too with understanding consciousness. It mutates, it evolves, um, it transforms, but it still should be retaining its divinely existence why can't it exhibit the same way as sexual vital fluid because the sexual vital fluids even when it operates it exhibits a similar property as akash particle but when i individualize my consciousness it does not show me the divine existence is there a difference between the understanding of the physical pancha buddha's transformation and the biomagnetic mind transformation that happens excellent i am very happy to hear this statement from you it is a, a statement or a question or a point to be elaborated i like this uh, i thank magarishi for acting through you to elaborate on this point. See, this is uh, the vital fluid, sexual vital fluid is a point between the energy particle and the absolute space. At this point, it has uh, of all the available elements in the uh, in the, in our planet, this uh, vital fluid or the plasma state is the closest to the absolute space, closest to divinity. The more closer it is, the more divine it is. So, of all the tadus, the seventh tadu is the most divine one. And it has, it has come out of absolute space. That is, when it gets subjected to surrounding self-compressive pressure force progressively, at a point, it is, it starts yielding. It breaks down to dust particles and to liberate energy particles. Before the appearance of the energy particles, the energy is in a uh, amorphous state. It is uh, neither energy nor the energy particle. So at this stage, it has come out of absolute space. So it has all the properties of divinity and they are exhibited in the activity of the vital fluid. The vital fluid is behaving, is doing every job of the absolute space. It holds everything in the body. It is the supreme. It encircles every cell 
it penetrates into every cell the organelles are penetrated into almost everything is a uh, permeated and penetrated by the vital fluid so if you have suspended particles in water it is just like that in the medium of vital fluid you have this uh subsequent uh evolved elements like uh, panchabhutas sabdatadus and the vital fluid everything like that so if that is clearly understood then there is no difficulty in understanding the further behavior of the human being whether it is physical or mental psychic everything is can be clearly understood is it okay tarun it's not just okay yeah this is a very interesting connection that you have built uh tying all the loose end not just okay it's beyond okay thank you very much ayya for all of that it is when you say the plasma or the sexual vital fluid is a stage between energy particle and absolute space what is the nature of the absolute space it has the mighty power it is almighty it is the, has the highest form of intelligence the order of function with its order of function and uh, the time is an integral portion of the absolute space all these things are present in the vital fluid that's why the vital fluid is so precious and it is the god himself has come with out of compassion to help the functioning of the living systems and uh, when you think of the uh, force element it is the strongest it penetrates any tissue of the body it enters anything anywhere and it forms any part of the evolved uh, tissues cells are the tissues are the sabda tadus anything is formed out of this thing and uh, if you take the order of function the intelligence part of it the consciousness element comes and every uh, component of this journey from space to sexual vital fluid is one moment that is uh, the energy of the absolute space and the intelligence the consciousness of the space is permeating through all the uh, manifestations all the evolutions of the system that is out of the spinning system if there is no spin this evolution will not be there yeah is, is it true more right huh? yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, this one when you say right between the space and the energy particle that is basically that is the dust particle right basically that's what it is so i no, no. and then the particle and energy particle are synonymous different names given to the same entity it is just like as you supply heat to water the water takes up the heat and remains changeless motionless you don't observe anything but once it crosses 100 it starts boiling vapor comes out similarly the surrounding self compressive pressure force is progressively increasing everlasting ever increasing this ever increasing factor 
keeps on the movement from space to the evolution and there is no point where this connection of space to the evolved things is breaking there is no change at all if there is a break the spinning system collapses it is just like the movement of air over the sea it is a depression the depression becomes a spinning uh, system of air which becomes stronger develops more attractive force to gather all the available things in the spinning system of air to make it a destructive tornado and the destruction power is so vast but once that balance between the spinning uh, heavy weights in the tornado when it increases the ability of the spinning system to maintain these hard particles in spin when that is disturbed the entire thing collapses the movement of the heavy objects collapses into the earth level or sea level and the tornado disappears it becomes weak this can occur even within the body in the movement of absolute space to the seventh tadu level at any point it can break at that point it can resume also that is the uh, to key point in divine nature okay vijay lakshmi you have any question vijay lakshmi Uh, sorry i if i am presenting i am unable to see the mute uh, unmute button sorry all right no. yeah, uh, yeah okay. i am not having any question at this point in yeah thank you so much for asking so uh, if there are no questions shall we postpone the rest to the next session sure maya yeah. yeah, we can do that with the permission of the audience uh i see one julia walker may I get introduced about walker yes sir namaste please explain introduce it, yours is it, it, it so much for your explanation is uh, very clear but i saw sorely because uh, goes need to do some work with uh, because repairing roof now in this moment and then i i didn't understand clearly about the genetic center all the seven datus um panchabhuta is clear for me thanks but the genetic center is not very clear which one Uh, about the genetic center maybe you are going to to give details about genetic center the next class if you want it i will explain yes 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 please this right right i will what are you you have not introduced yourself oh, you have oh my, oh my introduced your thinking <laughs> 
I am one being in this planet only, no? Uh, uh, I don't know what to tell about me, no? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I am interested in everything about the, the life and the self and the university and Shiva and Shakti and but uh, what uh, do you need to know what uh, who are who am I? Yeah, yeah. Not, but, not the spiritual who am I? <laughs> who am I? Not, it's very not the spiritual. <laughs> you, you put the social at the physical <laughs> level. Social. Okay, okay, okay. Um, I I stay in India a long time. Study mm. yoga and Sanskrit. I am chemical engineer, but uh, uh, when finish this profession, uh, I went to India to st to study uh, yoga therapy and Sanskrit, and and then uh, now I am in Venezuela for some.